In this lesson, we will learn how to edit keyframes on the time slider. In this scene, I've added a bit of animation. This is something very similar to what we've already worked on. I'll go ahead and hit play. So it's just our vehicle moving across this bridge. Now, what I'd like to do is use this to show you some other helpful keyframing tools right here on the time slider. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll go to the show menu. Let's go ahead and show our control objects. So we'll bring back NURBS curves. And let's now go ahead and grab the object name Anim Transport 01. So we know how to move keyframes. We can hold down Shift and click to grab the keyframe. And then at that point, we can use the left mouse button to slide this along our frames until we've managed to retime the animation. So in this case, I'm now taking the key that was on frame 30 and I've moved it to frame 15. So you'll notice that when I hit play, the beginning of the animation is going to be a bit faster. How cool. I actually kind of like that speed. So there you go. Now how would we move a group of keyframes? Well, it works the same way. We would hold down shift and we would left click and drag to select the amount of keys that we would like to edit. At that point again, we can go ahead and select in the center of our selection range and we can start to slide this around until we've managed to retime this group of keys. We could also scale our keys using the same selection range. You'll notice these handles on either side of our selection. So watch, if we were to go ahead and left click and drag, we can either slow down our timing by dragging this out or we can speed it up by compressing our selection. Let's say we go ahead and drag this out just a bit and we'll hit play. All right, sweet. So we'd slow down the ending just a bit. Fantastic. Now, how would we remove keys? Well, we know we can go to the frame that we'd like to remove the key on, and then we would right-click and choose Delete. Now, how would we remove a group of keyframes? Well, we would need our selection range for that. So we can now go ahead and highlight the last few keys in the animation. We can right-click and choose Delete, and now they're gone. Let's hit Play. Chances are we need those keys. You can see how the animation ends very abruptly. And we use those keyframes to kind of cushion the animation. But since they're gone, now we have lost that convincing quality that the animation once had. So let's go ahead and press the Z key to undo back to bring those keys back to our time slider. Fantastic. All right, wonderful stuff. Now, let me go ahead and show you a few other tools that I think you'll find really helpful. I'll go ahead and right-click and go to the Keys menu. From there, let's go ahead and tear this off. So here we have breakdown keys. We can also add in-betweens. Now, how does this all work? Let's go ahead and start with the breakdown option. So a breakdown key is essentially one that uh, binds itself to surrounding keys. So as we start to move surrounding keys, the breakdown key will always stay proportional to the keys that we are moving. So watch this. I'll go ahead and take the keyframe on 15, and I'll convert that to a breakdown key. Fantastic. You'll now notice that when I start to pull at the key on frame 37, it's actually going to cause this key to either get a little bit closer to the starting key, or further away as we start to pull further away. So I've just brought this key over to about frame 50. Now watch this. You'll notice that the animation is going to move a little bit slower. It's very close to what we had initially. If I were to go ahead and take this key on 50 and start to bring it in a little bit closer, I'll go ahead and drop it on about frame 18. You'll now notice that the animation is going to have a very fast start. Take a look at that. It's so almost moving at warp speed. Not quite, but close. <laughs> but isn't that neat? I'd highly recommend that after you're done working with your breakdown key that you convert it back to a normal keyframe. That way, you know for certain that this key will always remain on that frame and it will never be retimed when you start to move surrounding keys. I'll go to frame 8 and then I'll choose convert to key. Take a look, it does not convert itself to a normal keyframe. That's simply because 
this key isn't necessarily on frame 8. This is what happens when we scale our keys either by using the breakdown tool or if we were to go ahead and highlight a set of keys and start to pull out our outer handles. Again, they're not necessarily on a whole frame. We can right click and choose snap to make sure that they are on whole frames. We can do the same thing for this key that's on about frame 7. It's in between 7 and 8. If you still want to leave the key at the current time, what you can do is hold down shift and drag to select that key and now you can choose convert to keyframe and it will remain at that frame and it will also now be just a, a standard key. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and hit the the play button to take a look at the animation again. All right, super cool. So again, I just wanted to show you a few options that we have to edit keyframes. These are tools that I find to be super convenient because they're a great way of quickly going in and kind of retiming the animation. Another option we have is the add in between tool, which is just a way of adding a little bit more space. So let's say if we have keys that are really close together and we'd like to add a bit more room to add more keys. Well, we can use add in between. So take a look. It's going to take the following keys and kind of shift them down one frame. And then we could use remove in between to bring those keys closer to our current time. So that's a look at the editing tools on the time slider. What I'll do now is stop the lesson because in the next lesson I'd like to talk to you a bit about the graph editor.